Tretyakov Gallery Composition 7 We are in the Tretyakov Gallery on Krymsky Val. Today, it presents a remarkable exposition of Russian art of the 20th century. We will focus on the work of one of the most prominent artists of the 20th century. We are looking at the works of Vasily Kandinsky, one of the greatest masters of the Russian avant-garde. This particular painting is called Composition 7. Let us dwell a little into his artwork and this very painting. Vasily Kandinsky painted this composition in 1913. Indeed, he went a long artistic journey and a thorny life path. Vasily Kandinsky turned to painting at a rather late age of 30. He started a completely different career, a whole new journey. This is a story of a man who studied law at the University of Moscow. Yet, Kandinsky's life changed dramatically at the age of 30. There were several reasons for that, as Kandinsky wrote about it. Along with his artwork, Kandinsky also wrote a number of outstanding books and theoretical works. This is how he describes his life story. At the age of 30, he visited an exhibition and saw Claude Monet's haystacks. In his eyes, the object seems to disappear almost completely in streams of light and color. He was deeply impressed by that composition, as he was by Richard Wagner's music, which he listened to at the Bolshoi theater. At that time, Kandinsky also learned about the divisibility of atom and wrote, Now, I believe a stone can rise in the air and dissolve in it. Kandinsky made his choice. He decided to become an artist. Kandinsky left for Munich and enrolled in the art school of a Slovenian artist, Anton Ashbe. His journey to abstraction was indeed an arduous one. Where did Kandinsky start? He painted Murnau landscapes, picturesque lakes and mountains. Even his course mates called Kandinsky a landscape and a colorist. Nature and color are the essence of Kandinsky's work. Later, Kandinsky created paintings with a fundamentally different spirit. He divided them into three main groups. The first one is impression as experience of external nature. The second one is improvisation as experience of internal nature. And finally, a more complex type of improvisation, what we now call composition as experience of internal nature. In other words, it's a reflection of emotions, feelings and thoughts of an artist, which are embodied in his artwork. Of course, creating such a piece is not an easy exercise, and Kandinsky ran through several stages. He created preparatory sketches and other compositions that preceded this work. By the year 1913, he created this landmark work in his career, Composition 7. It's an abstraction work, and I would like to emphasize that we consider Kandinsky to be the ancestor of abstraction. Back in 1910, he created his first abstraction watercolor and painted his famous Composition 7 in 1913. We can clearly see how he turns from depicting figurative elements. We do not see any people, landscapes or animals here. There is just the world of abstract forms. At first, a viewer would perhaps feel that the content, the image, is missing. But the artist actually stressed something different. This is a complex reflection of the artist on space, color and rhythm. Then, when we look at this work, we also see this special image that Kandinsky created. You might agree with me that no viewer can easily reproduce this work, as no similar shapes, color spots or lines are alike in Kandinsky's composition. This world is somewhat captivating to the viewer. We look closer into certain fragments of the work, and we see that. Though he broke the traditional rules of composition, 
We are still gripped by the complexity of the world that Kandinsky created. You will not see the horizon line here. Kandinsky did not paint the horizon line, neither he used single-point perspective, yet the scene seems so sophisticated. If we look, for example, at separate details of the work, such as this blue arrow, how this element of the painting is usually called, we will see that, in relation to it, separate elements, such as this yellow triangle next to it, seem to break into our, the viewer's, space. The dark shapes, on the contrary, seem to move away from the viewer. Kandinsky perfectly knew the rules of light. Let us remember them too. Warm colors seem to be closer to the viewer, while cold colors seem to move away a little. This creates a sense of spatiality when we look at this work. One more thing. When we look at the composition as a whole, we can see the shape of a triangle inside this complex world of abstract forms. If you once again look at this arrow at the bottom, the red corner of the triangle, and at the top the red-orange corner, you will see the main forms that Kandinsky used inside this triangle. He has a special approach to geometric shapes. For instance, triangle is a special shape for Kandinsky. He believed that triangle was the embodiment of the spiritual life of humans and humanity in general. At some point in time, there is a genius at the apex of the triangle, and the rest of mankind follow him. Time changes, and someday, at the point where the genius stands today and his ideas can be perceived by another person, for whom these ideas may be somewhat obscure at first. Still, Kandinsky believed that the artwork is not just all canvas and oil paint. He placed much importance on that moment, too. Each painting reflects the atmosphere of time. Remember when this work was created, the year 1913, the world on the eve of the First World War. The world is about to change dramatically. At some point, it was as if the generation is experiencing the apocalypse of history. Yet, when we look at this work, there is no sense of tragedy, of a collapsing of the world. On the contrary, Kandinsky had a bright outlook on the creation of the world. Perhaps, Composition 7 can even be compared with the first pages of the Bible's book of Genesis, when neither nature, nor man, nor animal had yet appeared, and there were only light and darkness. Only the first elements emerged from them, as if a new world was being created. Looking at this work, we see the prevalence of light color. Kandinsky interpreted color philosophically. For one, he saw white as the possibility of birth and black as the possibility of death, the two poles. Between them is the widest palette of the colorful world. When we look at composition 7, it seems as if this palette is actually unfolding in front of us. The world is being created right before our eyes, the world created by the artist. There are more lighter shades of color than dark ones, and perhaps Kandinsky believed that there could be a bright future for mankind. Presumably, this also represents Kandinsky's reflections on macrocosm and microcosm, or maybe the universe, or mankind. It's no coincidence that these theories arise. It was the general intellectual context of the era. Let us remember that the beginning of the century was marked by scientific development. The 20th century is associated with such scientists as Planck and Einstein. This was the time when Tsiolkovsky and Vernadsky developed the theory of cosmism. This was the general intellectual context of the era for Kandinsky. We may, of course, ponder on the fact that a man will go into space much later, but this reflection on macrocosm is found in this work by Kandinsky. It is as if the artist breaks the boundaries of our cognition, something that science will do later, and that is contemplated by modern philosophy. I would also like to mention that it was Kandinsky's belief that any work reflects the emotions and thoughts of the artist, and they in turn interact with the soul of the audience. This also
also is a very important point, because it is as if we, as spectators, are directly involved in the process of experiencing of the painting. Sometimes the impression from abstract art can be compared to that of a symphonic orchestra. When we listen to symphonic music, we actually have no particular visions. We do not hear the birds singing or the sound of rain, but the sounds we hear have a powerful emotional impact. The same impression we get from abstract paintings by Kandinsky. And Kandinsky believed that a painting could also influence the overall spiritual atmosphere of the era. For an artist, creating a work is also a special experience. In its turn, art seems to be able to change the world mankind lives in. And perhaps this interesting theory by Kandinsky, I gave a comparison with music with the symphonic orchestra on purpose, because Kandinsky himself compared color with sound. He felt very keenly about this theory. For example, Kandinsky once wrote that yellow sounds like an alto, light blue sounds like a flute, and dark blue sounds like a cello. If blue takes a very deep shade, it can be compared to the sounds of an organ. In this way, Kandinsky somehow created a color symphony. We can even paraphrase the title of the work a little and say that Composition 7 is like Symphony 7. This work may also be Kandinsky's reflection on humanity, since in theory Kandinsky contemplates on the influence of color on a person's emotional side. We all know green color calms us down, but red, on the contrary, excites us. And when we look at this color symphony by Kandinsky, we feel a completely different spectrum of emotion. Yet, if we look closely at the composition, we see some kind of a core that gives rise to this intricate world of forms and lines used by Kandinsky. Moreover, if we look only at this fragment of the composition, we may probably find resemblances in this abstract form. It might resemble a little of an animal cage or a plant. In other words, this is a reflection of the micro Microcosm that Kandinsky also had in his mind. Maybe these reflections on the laws of the microcosm relate to a later period of his work, and maybe some ideas had already been embodied in Composition 7.